Hello, welcome to VMC. I'm Dr. M. I wanted to put out a contrasting video highlighting some positive reinforcement trainers. A lot of them were suggested by you actually, so that we have a side-by-side -side comparison to help more clearly demonstrate why positive reinforcement is the current standard of care. As we will be covering a few different trainers, I won't be giving any history off the hop. I will try to put a little bit of information about each of them on the screen once we get to a video that is showing some of their work. I also wanted to remind everybody, I already have some videos defining the four quadrants and also covering the immense amounts of research that we have about positive reinforcement, punishment, dominance theory, and the like. So if this is something that you aren't already familiar with, you will need to go back and watch those videos first. All right, let's dive in. We are going to show you Rachel Forday. She is doing some amazing and lovely work and is really focused on how we want to form cooperative partnerships with our dogs. That doesn't mean that the dog just complies. The dog has a choice. Let's see what they end up doing. Yep, so here in the video setup, you can see that Rachel is sitting cross-legged. I'm assuming this is a mat that this dog has a strong reinforcement history with. The veterinarian is kneeling and will end up being behind where the dog would be standing facing the handler. And he was uncomfortable. Yeah, so you can see as he stands there that there's a little bit of tension. This video quality isn't great. I'm sorry about that, but there's a little bit of tension in his face and in his lips. However, his tail is not tucked. The rest of him is looking okay. So I can understand why at this point they went, okay, let's see how he does. And if we can just build the behavior from here, you can see she go, oh, he's startled. Yeah, okay. He says, hey, what are you doing back there? And he was, he was not able to hold his chin rest. Now, he still received a reinforcement for that because this information is telling these two people, hey, this was a little bit too much for this dog. We need to make an adjustment. Yeah, he walks away. Perfect. So they give him a break. Exactly. So we don't want to continue something that's failing. So we make the setup easier. Exactly. That is exactly right. Uh, and this time he is able to maintain his chin rest and that is an excellent, excellent thing. This is great information. He looks, okay, he's easy to offer the chin rest. Oh yeah, okay, slight. And so you can see how there's just a little bit of tension when he gets touched. So it's a good thing that they're working on this, but it's not so much for him that he chooses to take his chin away. And you can see how he's now eager and there's less tension in his face than there was earlier because he's like, ah, we've got this. Oh, what a good boy. What a good boy. And he nicely stands still. Wonderful. And he chooses to stay. He's not avoiding anybody. He's not trying to get away from them. If he wanted to, he can leave. There's nothing holding him here. This is a... I like, I have little goosebumps because this is so lovely to see. And I wish that all the people I work with in a vet clinic setting would do this with their dogs because this would make a world of difference in the vet clinic. That makes me so happy. Well done. This is a wonderful human named Hannah Brannigan. I have watched her teach clinics and have always learned so much the thing that I always learned from Hannah is how to break every behavior down in, you think you've got the smallest approximation in a behavior and she will come up with a way to make it even smaller to keep the dog successful. And her attention to detail and precision is just beautiful. So here she's working on moving backwards in a heel position, it looks like. So let's see what happens. Start on the target, wonderful. Lure the dog forward. Uh, so notice that this is just the smallest amount of movement. 
Now this dog does already know how to target back feet to a target. That's important because the dog has to learn what that means before you can add in the distraction of having a human being moving and having the dog move with that human being. Lovely. Mm -hmm. Oh. <laughs> So what I love here is how she uses the reinforcement to bring the dog forward again. So here what we're seeing is a really nice training loop. So the dog does the behavior we want. The reinforcement sets them up to do that behavior again. This makes it much clearer for the dog what exactly we're working on in this particular session. And this is a beautiful example of that. Training loops are lovely and he stays with her. So that's also important that she's marking, hey, the thing that we're looking for is that you remain in the heel position with me. And look how eager he is. He's totally focused. He's staying with her. He's not avoiding. He has wonderful, happy, excited <laughs> little tippy taps. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so... You saw there how he anticipated a little bit. So she didn't click because that's not the behavior she's looking for. There's no punishment. It's no problem. His body language remains relaxed. Hers remains relaxed. There's no need to get worked up and in a fuss. We just start back at where we were and try the repetition again. And I'm, I'm sure that's what she'll do here. Yeah, see he missed. There we go. So that one was better, so she reinforces it. Also better. That's so lovely. And you can see how his movements became smoother and more in tune with her throughout this training session. And also notice, this is short. You can get a number of really nice clean reps in a minute, and that's all you need. This behavior is well on its way here. And we also notice that she then makes it clear when it's over and he can have a break. There is no need to punish. This dog is now learning what it means to walk in the heel position with the human. You don't need a leash for that. You teach it step by step by step. So watching those videos was quite enjoyable for me. I hope that seeing this behavior modification using positive reinforcement and how I've explained slash reacted to it is helpful to you in understanding why this is the current standard of care. If you have a topic suggestion you'd like me to cover in the future or a popular person that you'd like me to cover in a future video, don't hesitate to leave the suggestion in the comments below. I look forward to reading them. And I put out a new video most Fridays, so I will see you in the next one. Bye for now.